Today I'm going to be building the rear control arms for the tube chassis drift Camaro utilizing this jig that you see here that I designed. Not only will it build a lower control arm, it will also build an upper control arm. So after the first set is made that goes onto the car, I can still use this jig to build spares and carry with us on track in case anything happens. Let me show you what we're building. So here is the upper control arm and the lower control arm fixtured in the jig. It's not pictured on the lower control arm is the actual push rod mount that we'll get to weigh later. But for now, let's just go ahead and get these designs made in the physical world so that we can put them on the car and know exactly where we want to put our push rod mounts. I got a couple of different components here. Some of you may be familiar with, some of you may not. If you're not familiar with the Uniball spherical bearing setup, you have your Uniball cup as well as the spherical bearing slides into the cup. Then you have this little clip that will clip in here that retains the spherical bearing inside the cup. And then once that clip is on, you get your misalignments that you see here that go into the spherical bearing. And you now have a uniball cup spherical bearing put together. Now, if you guys are wondering what this little guy is, this is a solid brass slug that I custom machined to fit inside our uniball cups. The reason you use a brass slug instead of any type of other material is that when we're welding a tube to the uniball cup, that cup is gonna wanna distort due to the heat but the brass will actually absorb the majority of the heat and then it will actually expand at a higher rate than the steel will. And when it expands, it's gonna keep this uniball cup at perfect roundness so that we can still insert our spherical bearing and our very tight tolerance uniball cup that you see here. So let's go ahead and get these guys bolted into our jig. All right, we're gonna start with the upper control arm first since in the in between this section right here gets plate work and then from here to here gets a tube and then from here to here gets a tube like what you saw in the design. So first, I'm gonna actually focus on this section right here. I'm gonna start doing the plates and once the plates are all tacked in, then I'll move forward with putting in the tubes. Before I start cutting anything out of metal, I went ahead and I one-to-one -one scaled the drawing of the plate that is gonna go right in here out of paper. And as I can see here, I'm just verifying that it's basically the right size and I can go ahead and cut this out of metal. All cut, all the pieces we needed. As you can see, Plasma Torch cuts a really nice cut. I mean, it's definitely not as nice as say like a laser, but you know what? The settings I have in my machine makes a really, really nice cut on eighth inch steel, which is what these are. But I have to do one more thing. I gotta chip off some of the slag that you see here, and then I can go ahead, I can put these onto the burr grinder, get some of this remaining slag off the edges so I can make a nice clean weld, and we can put these on the control arm. All right, so this guy will go down there. Then we have our two sides <laughs> and the top. Let's weld it up. So for some of you that don't know, I actually, I taught myself how to TIG weld when I was 16 years old. Uh, first I started out MIG welding then after I taught myself how to MIG weld pretty decent, I was like, hey, let's try this TIG thing. I was very humbled very quickly. I'm not the, you know, best, you know, TIG welder in the world, but I'm confident enough to where this will look pretty decent. It will hold, it will do its purpose, get my car on the track. Oh, that's hot. So there you have it, there's the start. I'm gonna add a little bit more tacks to this just to keep it from not moving. So I'll do a whole run of really, really small tacks around the whole box structure, and then we'll start adding the tubes. I don't know if you guys noticed, but now that I have the fixture flipped over, you can see that these holes that I put in the fixture give me access to weld from the backside 
these holes weren't here, I wouldn't be able to reach these spots, obviously. If you're building a fixture like this, or jig, give yourself some access holes. All right, we got our tubes all rough cut. Just so you know what this material is, this is DOM, it's a 120 wall. I think it's overkill for what we're doing realistically. Probably should have done this at a 083, but this is version one. Uh, I think it's gonna be too stiff, but we'll find out when it's on the car and we're ripping around track. This is inch and a quarter OD. Also, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these, you know, notched to fit. It's very straightforward, as you can see here. The only difficult section of this joint is gonna be this one, where not only am I gonna have to notch it, I'm gonna have to also make them merge together. I don't want it to where this tube merges in like this and I don't want it where it's merging in like this. Realistically, I wanna get it to where it merges perfectly in the center. So now what I'll do is I'll mark the other notch. As you can see here, and then I'll just repeat the same step. There we go. Got a real nice fit on both sides. I'm not gonna tack this just yet because we still have to do a little slice here to make the merge for this guy. I'm gonna notch this side, get that all fitted, and then I'm gonna go ahead and notch this to where it's perfectly fit there. Then we'll go ahead and make the cuts to make these two tubes merge. Then we'll tack it down and we'll weld it up. All right, now we're at the tricky part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little line here and here, and we're gonna cut them on my bandsaw and see if we can get these to merge perfectly together. I went kind of shallow on the cut, so if I have to go back over this with the Burr King and take it further in, I can. There you have it. We can go ahead and tack this up and then weld it up. All right, for the most part, a lot of the welding is pretty much done. I'd say maybe like 90% of it is done. Uh, super happy with the way it came out. Literally let this thing cool to somewhat, you know, room temp. It's like a little bit hotter, uh, you know, than to the touch, but then again, I'm very impatient. <clears throat> All right, I'm really happy with the way the upper control arm went. Everything has worked out absolutely flawlessly. I'm gonna go ahead and build the lower control arm now. It's way less complicated, doesn't have that extra spherical bearing in it. It actually only has three, two up on the frame side and one on the knuckle side. I'm gonna save you guys the trouble of having to watch that all over again because obviously you've seen the process. So let me make a lower control arm right now. All right, there you have it, lower control arm done. Let's go see what it looks like next to the car. So check that out. We got some control arms for the tube chassis drift Camaro. They came out super nice. The jig worked phenomenal. I can't like the, the slugs, everything. It was perfect. Uh, I haven't done the passenger side just yet. I only focused on the driver side. There's a couple other things that I want to R&D before I move forward with actually making the passenger side as well. One being the actual shock placement. We're going to be doing a cantilever setup. So I kind of wanted to get some real arms on the car to further that, as well as there's a couple of other little pieces that I wanted to share with you is actually the control arm to frame mounts that you see here. This is a 3D printed piece that eventually will make out a billet aluminum, as well as the knuckle. The knuckle, I think I'm gonna do out of billet aluminum or I might even fabricate it. We'll see, I already do have a design already done. So the geometry is already done, but you know, I'm not sure if I wanna go the billet aluminum route or the steel fabricated route just yet. 
But all that stuff will be revealed in the next video as well as the tie rod itself. I know a lot of you are probably wondering what that third uh, spherical bearing or fourth spherical bearing is for on the upper control arm that's actually for the tie rod. So again, I'll reveal that to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please like this video. Hit that notifications bell. So as soon as I drop that video, you'll be notified. Hope to see you again.